What's going on guys? My name is Triforce Addiction. Welcome back to another COD Mobile video. So today we did get the patch notes for season 11 and they are quite interesting to say the least, especially for a few that might change the course of the meta. But even if it doesn't, it helps increase the variety of the weaponry that we already have, but you know, it could still be ex expanded upon. This ranges from SMGs to even shotguns itself. So it is very interesting to see, and it's very well worth your time testing all these weapons once the update does release. I'm assuming that the Korean version and the Vietnamese version will come first uh, during the weekend, and eventually during the weekday around maybe Monday or Tuesday, we should be able to get our, you know, in-game update. So as per usual, we are going to go over all of the changes for multiplayer mainly, and I'll give you guys my impression within each of these changes. So anyways, let's get started. So first off, we start off with a very unexpected change, which is the BK-57. So they did some adjustments to the Ranger Barrel. They did increase the range bonus from 20% to 35%, acting kind of like a makeshift Marksman Barrel. And it also decreased the ADS time penalty from 17% to 14%. So it's going to be a little bit less heavier, but you also get more benefits now. As for the 7.62 ammunition, it improved the damage profile from 27 to 22 all the way to 29 to 24. So I did some testing on this one. Trust me, it's not really much of a gigantic change. Um, it would be a huge change if, you know, there were multipliers towards like the chest and the arms, but it's still at, you know, one times. The only multiplier that's ever going to really be uh, improved upon is just the headshot. So yes, you get more damage towards the head at longer ranges, but it's not really going to make that much of a difference. So. Again, this ammunition option is not going to be really necessary. So there are also adjustments to the HBR A3. They only really improved the Thunderbolt Sling. They didn't do anything to the core weapon itself. Uh, they removed the BSA penalty, so now you don't get any issues with your bullet spread accuracy. They also added a 10% flinch reduction and also added a 6% raise time reduction. So I'm assuming this doesn't really have anything to do with ADS speed, but I think it might have to do... So it might have something to do with the sprint to fire speed instead. So now we move on to one of my personal favorite changes for the season, which is the AS Vow. So as you guys know, the AS Vow is one of my, if not my favorite assault rifle within this game. And I've been using it a lot this entire season. And what they did is that they improved the range profile from 620 to 30 meters to 7.5, 20, and 30. So basically, the first range was the only thing that got improved and only got like improved by like one and a half meters. It's whatever, no big deal. But also, for the extended mag, they also increased the capacity. So instead of having 35 rounds after equipping it, you now get 40 rounds. So yeah, much more ammo. Uh, that you could use for the extended mag. It's amazing. So now we move on to a minor change for the Peacekeeper MK2. It did get a range uh, increase from 13, 21, 40 to 13.5, 23, and 40. So basically a slight improvement to the first range and as well as the second one by like two meters. I don't really think it brings it back to how it was before, but it's a slight improvement nonetheless. So for all of you guys that made the Peacekeeper, I mean, there you go. It's something good for you. Another change is the CR-56 AMAX. They decreased the bullet spread as well as improved the smoothness of the initial recoil. So, um, to my knowledge, I used the, C the CR-56 AMAX a lot and I used it a lot in the past as well. Um, the recoil pattern wasn't really that bad. The only complaint that it had was that maybe it did kind of like shift a little bit too hard to the left. So I'm hoping that they actually do fix that in terms of the initial recoil but overall i mean it's not really a hard weapon to control but yeah it kind of raises my i i guess my concern um hopefully it does fix that issue so now we move on to a change that i think really only applies to battle royale since i mean multiplayer the dlq already could one shot headshot from any range but the headshot multiplier for the dlq 33 did get improved from 2.3 times to 4 times. And from my knowledge and based on what my friend told me, he did say that I think the Rytek and the ZRG are like the only ones that could one-shot headshot in Battle Royale. So this type of multiplier buff might actually help the DLQ in Battle Royale. But in multiplayer, it's more or less going to stay the same. So now the final change for the left half of page 1 for the patch notes. Uh, we do have the HG40... Uh, it, all they pretty much did was decrease the recoil. I mean, it was already, it was already pretty stable. I guess they had they found some sort of reason to do so, 
But whatever. Maybe it's a, another Battle Royale change, but multiplayer, it wasn't really much of a huge issue. So now we move on to the second half of page one, which is the UL 736. It improved the ADS time from 380 milliseconds to 330 milliseconds. It also improved the sprint to fire delay from 180 milliseconds to 170 milliseconds. And it also decreased the ADS speed. Um, I, I think that, oh, not sorry, that's the ADS spread. Sorry, I read it wrong. But yeah, they just it pretty much overall increased the speed. They didn't do any changes to like the range or anything like that. And I know a lot of people are probably concerned about this, but keep in mind the UL really starts off with only like 30 uh, bullets and it could only be improved by, I think like 50 or maybe a little less. So yeah, I mean, I don't really see this being too much of a problem, but if anything, it does kind of help it compete against, you know, the Hades or the, you know, the, what's the Holger. So for the Mac 10, at least in multiplayer, they did improve the range profile from 513.20 to 714.20. So uh, I guess an increase of like two meters within the first range and just one meter within the second range. That could help a little bit for the Mac 10. I'm not really that sure. It might cause a lot of issues, but again, I could be wrong about that. As for VR, they decreased the damage profile overall. So yeah, whatever. So we got some pretty massive changes for the AGR 556 SMG. It improved the penetration. I didn't even know it had penetration. Don't most SMGs not have penetration at all, but I guess whatever. Uh, they, impre they improved the range profile from 12, 20, 30 meters to 14, 20, and 30. So really just the first range got improved by like two meters. It's whatever. Uh, for the 30 round uh, 556 mags, they also decreased the ADS time penalty from 18% to 12%. So it's gonna be a little quicker. Um, as for the extended magazine, something that I've been asking for for quite a long time, uh, they also ex they also extended that one. So I believe it's gonna make it into a 40 round mag. So yeah, you're gonna have a lot more ammo if you choose to go the SMG route for the AGR. So we have another surprise improvement for the Razorback. It did get increased movement speed from 4.88 meters per second to 4.92 meters per second. And it also improved the ADS speed from 225 milliseconds to 210 milliseconds. So a decently significant change for the Razorback as well as ADS movement speed from uh, 3.66 meters to 3.79 meters per second. So just slight changes to movement speed overall, but the ADS speed might be uh, something to actually look at and for the Razorback it's been underrated for quite a long time And I, I was kind of hoping that they make some sort of change to the reload animation because it's still kind of slow Especially for an SMG like that So another surprise change for the PDW 57 it did get improved damage from 27 22 17 15 to 27 24 17 and 15 so now um, you know based on the multipliers that I did see for the PDW 57 uh, you're going to be able to four shot in the second range as well. So within those within those 16 meters, you're going to have a lot better uh, four shot capability. And as for the range, it also got improved. Uh, it went from 9, 15, 28 to 10, 16, 28. So yeah, a slight improvement. You know, both of those ranges got improved by one. But yeah, a pretty decent change for the PDW. So now we move on to the last change for the first of two pages of patch notes, which is the GKS. So the improved damage, or well, they improved damage from 33, 29, 24, 19 to 33, 32, 24, 19. Uh, they also decreased the range by 8, 20, 35 to 9, 16, 35. And there is a perfectly good reason for that. Uh, so as you can see, um, obviously the damage before on the second range was 29. Now it got increased to 32. That is just enough for you to three shot around, you know, just the upper body for the GKS. So they had to lower the range by four meters, at least on the second range to kind of balance it out because if they kept it at 20 meters, it would have been. So now we move on to what is perhaps the biggest change for season 11, which is the Fennec. So they improved the range profile from 12, 17, 24 to 13, 18, 24. This only applies to multiplayer. And for BR, they did kind of like the same thing. And for the biggest changes is with the multiplier. So the headshot multiplier got improved from like 1.1 times to 1.3 times which I believe makes the damage up to 29 in close range. And they also improved the chest multiplier from 1.1 times to 1.2 times, as well as increasing the upper and lower arm multiplier from 0.8 times to one times. So what this basically means is that the Fennec might actually make a comeback for the second time 
and this time it might not be that pretty and it's and I don't know if this actually applies to the Akimbo Phoenix as well. I'm assuming people are still going to use the single one. I'm not sure if, you know, Akimbo will actually change anything. But yeah, having those multipliers improve by that much, you're going to be able to four and five shot very consistently now. So as for these two next changes, I decided to bunch them together since they're more or less the same type of change. So the Echo got improved slug damage profile from 54, 47, 30 to 28 all the way to 84, 77, 60, and 58. That basically means with the slug rounds, you're gonna be able to two shot from any fucking range with this thing. So it's crazy. I, I believe that they did that to kind of like match the slug round potential that the Jack 12 has, because I know you could two shot with that one as well from like almost any range. As for the striker, uh, they did pretty much the same thing. They also improved the reload speed by 30%. The only difference to this one is that on the final range, you're not going to be able to two shot anymore. And keep in mind, like the damage multipliers are all over, I think all over the body. They're just like at one time. So yeah, unfortunately within the final range, you're not gonna be able to two shot. But the improved reload speed is actually a big plus because obviously it affects the weapon overall. So. Putting fast reload with sleight of hand mixed with this new speed. Oh my god, I can only imagine. So now we move on to perhaps one of the most unexpected changes for this patch notes, which is the crossbow. So they improved the bolt speed from 120 meters per second to 150 meters per second. I think that's the right unit of measurement. Um, they also increased the bolt speed for battle royale and zombies as well. And they also improved f the damage for multiplayer from 80 to 100 so from what it looks like you're going to be able to one shot from anywhere on the body i'm not sure if there's like some sort of range drop off for the crossbow i'm not really too certain on that but yeah it's pretty much going to be a killing machine now so now for a change that definitely puts a massive smile to my face the kilo bolt action so they decrease the ads time from 380 milliseconds to 360 milliseconds so it's a pretty big change especially for a marksman rifle and they also improve the reload speed by 15 percent so it's gonna be a lot faster and this can help if you decide to use stopping power rounds or the thermite rounds and even the fast reload so yeah overall a huge speed increase hopefully um, I could find the use stopping power reload with just, you know, with normal speed instead of like having it be like slower than snipers. So yeah, a much welcome change for this marksman rifle. So now we move on to just all the various changes for score streaks and, you know, grenades and everything. So the VTOL got improved durability from 701 health to 900. So that's a pretty big one for the VTOL. But I'm assuming it did get shot down pretty easily. So I guess that's warranted. Um, as for the Swarm, the cost increased from 1,100 points to 1,200 points. So you're going to have to get at least one more kill before you actually get the Swarm. As for the Molotov, a much welcome change, for fuck's sake. Uh, decreased duration from 8 seconds to 7 seconds. To be honest, it feels like it's longer than 8 seconds. If anything, it feels like a whole minute that the cocktail is like just on fire. So yeah, I'm glad they reduced it, even if it's by 1 second. Um, they also uh, made a nerf to the Shock RC. Uh, they decreased the maximum number of affected people from 2 to 1. Um, I mean, that's kind of, that was kind of like the magic of like the Shock RC, that you could actually sometimes get like you know two people instead of one. I felt like that was kind of an accomplishment if you did that. But I guess, whatever. Um, as for the EMP nade, it decreased the delay from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 sec... Wait, 2.5 to 1.5. Okay, so I'm reading this right. Apparently, I don't know what the, I don't know what that means. Maybe it explodes faster. I'm not really that sure. It also decreases the duration effect towards, you know, I guess, like enemies. I don't know. I, I guess. I mean, using EMP grenades on people doesn't really make much of a difference to them. Um, decreased maximum duration of the effect on the user from three to two seconds. Decreased minimum duration of effect on the users from two to one second. So, it just basically means. It, these are just changes that affect the player itself and not actual score streaks or anything. So I don't, I mean, it, like, you know, when I get hit by an EMP grenade, I don't really, it doesn't really affect me at all, but I guess.